hyperbolic orbit accumulation boundary points. Thank you. First, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for in inviting me to this wonderful conference. Every talk is quite uh, impressive, so I'm worried that my talk can reach that high standard. And also, I uh, apologize that my topic is a bit different from the other one. My talk will be mainly several complex variables, but my motivation comes from local invariant. So first, let me introduce my motivation. So uh, let M and M tilde be the real analytic, real hypersurfaces in a complex space. Then the question is that whether they are biholomorphically equivalent or not. And Fankara observed that the dimension of the, so since these are uh, real hypersurface, this defined by real valid function. And the Poincaré observed that the jet of real, real valid function is much bigger than the jet of biholomorphic maps. So there are many, um, pairs of real hypersurfaces which are not biholomorphically equivalent. So to solve this local problem, the first way is to find all intrinsic invariants, which leads to Cartan connection. And second one is find all extrinsic invariants. This leads to find normal forms. So um, I studied the normal form case. Now let M is defined by this equation. And the second derivative of this H forms the Levy form at the origin. And the signature of this Levy form is a biholomorphic invariant. So this is the first biholomorphic invariant. And this can, with this, we can define a hyperquadric, which is tangent to this hypersurface M up to order 3. And we consider this real hypersurface as a, um, as a perturbation of hyperquadrics. And to find a normal form is to fit this hyperquadric to M as good as possible. So if the Levy form is non-degenerate, then this method gives you the chan moser normal form. And the Levy degenerate case, we cannot define uh, hyperquadrics. But some cases we can find where this is formal normal form, that means just power series, and under some conditions. The first one is given by Ebenfeld, and second one is given by Kula, and this, this condition is a bit complicated, so let me just <coughs> uh, say a, a Kula's result. And here, Kula uh, constructed a weighted hypersurface, which can be fit to uh, the original hypersurface uh, in higher order. So that gives the Kula's normal form in C2. And for higher dimensional case, first we have to find models with large automorphism group so that, so that we can fit M0 to uh, M in a nice way. And the second one is to find some, some CR invariants which generalize the Levy non-degeneracy to find this model. So this, this is actually the first question and this is the second question. And 
So how large the automorphism group is? Uh, so for so I studied the boundary of domains which has large automorphism groups. So I studied the domain with big automorphism group. Now let omega be a bounded domain in Cn and define O to omega by the set of all biholomorphic self-maps. Then with compact open topology, this becomes a Lie group. And when this automorphism group is big, the first bounded Hermitian symmetric domains are classified by Kata. And the next homogeneous domain is also completely classified. And among those domains, ball is the only smoothly bounded one. And the boundary of ball is uh, the sphere, which is a hyperquadric. So we, we already know. And when next case is when automorphism is automorphism group is non-compact. And the first result is given by Wang and Rose. That is, if omega is strongly pseudo-convex, then omega is biholomorphically equivalent to the ball. So this goes back to this case. And the second one is by Bedford and Pinchu. That is, if omega is in C2, pseudo-convex with real analytic boundary, then omega is 2n domain. And here, 2m is the type of some special boundary point. And the generalization of bedford Pinchuk theorem is given by also bedford Pinchuk and Gossier. That is, if omega is convex, finite type. So let me uh, explain what type is uh, later. Then omega is biholomorphically equivalent to a domain defined by some weighted homogeneous polynomial P. And the degree of this polynomial P is less than or equal to two times of the type of this domain. So, and this type is actually the type of some special boundary point. Uh, and infinite type case, this is proved by Kang Te Kim. And if omega is convex with piecewise Levy flat boundary, then omega is biholomorphically equivalent to by disks. And there are some other results by. Uh, and in mathematics. Only Carton showed if omega is bounded, then automorphism group is non-compact if and only if there is a non-compact orbit. That means there exists a family of automorphisms and an interior point and a boundary point so that the family of automorphism maps sends this interior point to this boundary point. And this boundary point is called an orbit accumulation point. And the degree of uh, the polynomial which is give, which um, Bedford, Pinchuk, and Gossier proved is the type of this boundary point. And the question is, if omega is a finite type, then omega is characterized by the CR geometry of the boundary at the orbit accumulation point. And there are two cases. One is the inverse of fk maps this interior point to another boundary point. And second one is this maps 
Q to the same point P. And usually this first case is, uh, is easier than the second one. So um, I just consider this first case. Now assume that omega is smoothly bounded and the automorphism Fk extends smoothly to the boundary for all k. Then in this case, the orbit accumulation point P is called hyperbolic orbit accumulation point. If this, this is the same as this. And second, Fk fix, each Fk fixes these two boundary points. Then this point P is called hyperbolic orbit accumulation point. And in this case, we can, we, we can consider the local problem of this type. So let's look at the boundary. So this is a local problem. When omega is real analytic, then we can define the automorphism group of M by the set of all biholomorphic map which sends M into M. Then M some point Q is said to be contractible if there exists a family of automorphism which sends this point Q to the origin. And Kruslin and Roboda proved if M is strictly pseudo-convex and if there exists a contractible point, then M is equivalent to a sphere. And if, if it is not strictly pseudo-convex but there be non-degenerate and also there exists a contractible point which is contracted by some, some special family, then Kang Tae Kim and Schmalz proved that in this case, M is equivalent to a hypochondry. So this, these two are Levy non-degenerate case. And for Levy degenerate case, Now let M be defined by this way. Then this is the real normal direction. N no, no. Complex normal direction. And F is called weakly contracting if F is contraction along uh, real direction. And Kang Tae Kim and myself proved that if M is of finite type, in this case, finite type is equal to uh, the condition that M has no complex variety. So in this case, if M admits a weakly contracting F, then M is equivalent to a uh, weighted homogeneous hypersurface. And the weights are given by some CR invariant, which is defined by Kathleen. So let me explain what Kathleen's multi-type later. And with that result, we can show that if M has contractible point, which is contracted by some normal family of automorphisms, then M is biholomorphically equivalent to a weighted homogeneous hypersurface. So this, this weighted homogeneous hyper, hypersurface can be our model in levy general case. Possibly, I don't know. And second, uh, for global case, 
if omega admits f which is contracting which is weakly contract contracting at a boundary point then omega is biholomorphically equivalent to a domain defined by weighted homogeneous polynomial For smooth case, the similar also holds. Similar, similar theorem also holds. So let M be a smooth real hypersurface. Then we can define automorphism group of M as a set of all CR diffeomorphism of. CR diffeomorphism which sends M into M. Then we proved that if M is a finite type and if M admits a weakly contracting F, then M is equivalent to a weighted homogeneous hypersurface and the weight here is given by Catherine's multi-type at this point. And with this, we can prove that if omega is a bounded pseudo-convex domain with smooth boundary of finite type, and if ome omega admits a hyperbolic orbit accumulation point, then omega is biholomorphically equivalent to a weighted homogeneous polynomial. So now let me explain what type is. There are several kinds of different types. First one is cone gloom gram type, which is given by brackets of CR distribution. And second one is defined by um, complex variety. So this is to measure the order of contacts of complex variety through the origin to uh, M. And if M is of finite type, then every um, complex variety has a uh, finite order of contact. And the third one is given by Kathleen. Catherine type is a multi-type. So uh, Catherine type is, so we are in C n plus 1. So this is uh, n plus 1 to prove integers with increasing uh, order. And the defining function of m satisfies this second condition. And Catherine's multi-type is the maximum of this kind of tau in lexicographic order in, in all uh, in all holomorphic coordinate changes, and this is this is equivalent to find a weighted homogeneous hypersurface with the maximum order of contact. Now let tau be a Catherine's multi-type. Then since we consider hypersurface, tau zero is simply one. And tau one is quorn bloom gram type. And tau n is less than or equal to Dangelo type at the origin. So if Dangelo type is finite, then Catherine multi-type uh, also is finite. There are some examples of different types. A hypersurface in CN plus 1 of this form is of finite quant Bloom-Gram type. 
but if n is bigger than or equal to 2, then there is no g2 variables, so this is of infinite Catherine type and infinite Denzeler type. And second one is a hypersurface in C3 defined by this equation. And then this is this is finite Catherine type, but this contains a complex variety, so this is of infinite Denzeler type. So all types are different. Using Catherine's multi-type, you can define weights for each variable, like this. Now, the Catherine type, uh, Catherine type is in, in the increasing order. So, tau And this is one, and this from this we um, choose this L Ls such that some of them are equal, and then next one is strictly larger, and and this like this. Then with this we can we can split. Tangent space like this. So first one is the span of real complex normal direction, and next one is the subspace of complex tangent direction with same order of contact in each direction. Then uh, this this is in some sense um, defined invariantly. So every f is preserved this filtration, and each each vector space we can define weight by one over uh, the tangent tangency of that direction, like this. So now we consider that M is a finite Catherine type. Then each direction we have finite uh, weight. And we, so we are in, in real analytic category. So M, the defining function of M can be written as this. This P is weighted homogeneous, and R is the term which is greater than the weight of this P. Since uh, Catherine multi-type is, is a maximum among all, uh, all tiles, we can show that if X is a holomorphic vector field, which this Rj is a weighted homogeneous polynomial with the same weight with this variable, and if x vanishes at the origin and the derivative of x vanishes at the origin, then xp is equal to 0 implies x itself is a trivial vector field. Otherwise, uh, we can find uh, the bigger tau in lexicographic order. And the proof, the idea of proof of the previous theorem is the following. Now let F, since F is a weakly contracting, we can um, find this mu. And we, 
we write M as this and also F can be written as this where D is a di diagonal matrix N is a nilpotent matrix R so this two is the first term of F and the rest of them is of order 2 where R satisfies this condition this condition is called resonance condition and G has no terms which satisfies resonance condition Since M is a finite type it contains no complex curves, especially. So in each direction, um, we can show that every complex direction, D is actually contracting with, with this condition. So this comes from, um, so this, this is just the computation. And from this, and R satisfies the resonance condition. This implies that each R is a weighted homogeneous polynomial with the weight uh, GJ, the weight of GJ. And we plug in this F to this equation, then the first term is simply, um, this is a linear term, so this, this is preserved by this linear term, and the action of R gives this equation. And by the previous lemma, we can show that Rj is simply Zero. So, up to some finite order, we can normalize F as a diagonal, where actually there is N, but with some effort we can show that N is actually zero. So, up to some finite order, F can be written as diagonal plus some G with higher order. Then, then in that case, this F can be linearized. This is a Poincare work. So Poincare proved the linear linearization of holomorphic contraction. Now let F be a term of a biholomorphic map. Then F is called contract contraction if this is so every each eigenvalue is less than one. Now, write F like this. So this is di diagonal, this is nilpotent. Then, a holomorphic map G is satisfies the resonance condition if this holds. And if F is contraction, then this, this resonance condition gives uh, says that this G, this G is a weighted homogeneous polynomial uh, of finite order of degree. And Poincare proved that if F is a contraction and has no uh, terms of resonance condition, then F is linearizable. And here is the idea of proof. This idea is due to uh, Ueda of Kyoto University. So they Poincare proved another way, but uh, this this is much simpler way. So since F is contraction, there there is an eigenvector v with eigenvalue less than 1. So choose the smallest one. Then write that 
v as this, for instance. Then this is an eigen vector, so we can see this with lambda less than one. Absolute value of lambda is strictly less than one. Now we iterate this x infinitely many, many times, like in this way. So then this xj, since this is contraction, this xj converges uniformly. And this is, so everything is in holomorphic category. So this xj converges to a holomorphic vector field, which satisfies this equation. So, and this x vanishes nowhere. So locally, we can straight this vector field x. So after holomorphic coordinate changes, we can straight x. And after this changes, f can be written as this. Then do the same thing for um, next largest eigenvalues. So inductively, we can find holomorphic vector fields which vanishes nowhere and satisfies this equation. Then we straight all these holomorphic vector fields. And after coordinate changes, uh, f can be written as. So this, this condition gives, gives you that f is just this and the term with resonance condition. And if f has no resonance, no terms of satisfying resonance condition, then f is actually a linear map. So For smooth case, so f can be c, f can be shown as a contraction, contraction because that that is just depend on finite jet. So in smooth case, f is weakly contracting, then it is also a contraction. So it contracts every uh, direction. Then the next one is to do the same thing for smooth CR contraction uh, as, as Poincaré linearized the holomorphic one. So the proposi proposition is that if F is a smooth CR contraction, then there exists a smooth infinitesimal CR automorphism T which is transversal to the complex tangent direction and satisfies this equation. Here mu is a con constant. Then if T is uh, transversal to the complex tangent direction, <coughs> then we can straight, straighten this T like this. And in C, in smooth CR diffeomorphism. And since this is tangent to M, this image is defined by this. So this is rigid. And since F satisfies this, so F tilde also satisfies this kind of equation. And this implies that F tilde is actually a holomorphic contraction. And holomorphic contraction mm, can be um, linearized by Poincaré's work. So we can linearize F. And if F is just a linear contraction, then M should be a weighted homogeneous hypersurface. So this is the smooth case.
And finally, um, let me introduce the green crunch conductor, which is um, which is a conductor of a bounded homogeneous bounded smoothly bounded domain with non-compact automorphism group. So that is, if omega is bounded with a smooth boundary, and then its orbit accumulation point, every orbit accumulating boundary point is of finite time. And this, this question is widely open. And recently, Kang Tae Kim and Yokos give some positive answer to this question and says that if M is a smooth CR manifold of hypersurface type and if F admits a smooth CR diffeomorphism which is contracting at, at some boundary at, at the origin then M is CR equivalent to a hypersurface defined, defined by a weighted homogeneous polynomial. So M is equivalent, by her, smoothly equivalent to a uh, real analytic uh, hypersurface. And from this theorem, they proved that if omega is bounded with a smooth boundary and if there exists F, which is contracting at a boundary point P, then this point P is of finite type. Finite type here is finite Dangelo type. And we proved that if omega is a bounded pseudo-convex domain with smooth boundary and suppose the Bergman kernel of omega extends smoothly to the boundary minus diagonal or just extends continuously, that's okay. Then omega admits, and if omega admits a hyperbolic orbit accumulation boundary point P, then there exists F which is contracting at P. So with this result and the result of Kim and Yokos, uh, we can prove that if omega is this, and then every hyperbolic orbit accumulation boundary point is of finite type. And here is the idea, idea of a proof. Now let P be a hyperbolic orbit accumulation point. Then it means there exists a family in an interior point and another boundary point such that the interior point goes to P and interior point by the inverse of FK goes to another point and this each FK fixes these two boundary points. Uh, now since omega is bounded, we may assume that this these two families con converge uniformly on uniformly on compact subsets of omega. So not, not omega itself, but compact subsets of omega. Then Bell proved that if the Bergman kernel extends smoothly up to the boundary, then this map FK converges uniformly on, on the boundary, uh, on some part of a boundary. That is, there, there exists a neighborhood of P such that FK converges uniformly to a constant map P on this set. And also, determinant of this converges uniformly to zero.
this implies that fk has some eigenvalue which is strictly less than 1 and since domain is bounded um, the eigenspace for this uh, eigenvalues strictly less than 1 should be uh, tangent, real tangent direction otherwise you have big complex curves inside the boundary so this implies, these two implies that F for large K is a weak CR contraction at, at this boundary point. So we will show that this FK is in fact a uh, CR contraction. Now let F, so this is, this is one FK, so FK, F is a CR con weak, weak CR contraction at P, and similarly we, we can assume that F inverse is also a weak CR contraction at the other point P prime. Then everything should um, goes to these two points. So F has no fixed point other than P and P prime. So with this fact and Bell's result, we can show that the iterated family of F converges uniformly to a constant map P on a neighborhood of P. Then, with this iterated family, we can show that there exists a holomorphic vector field X on omega, which is continuous, where, which is smooth up to the boundary, such that XP is transversal to the tangent direction, and F, F star X is H times X, where H is a holomorphic function. So we, we can find some, not vector fields, but some direction which is preserved. And by integrating this vector fields, we can find some family of holomorphic curves Cx through every point uh, such that F maps this to this. Then, <coughs> from this, we can show that this, this is omega, this is a boundary omega, boundary of omega, and we have some family of curves which is transversal to the tangent direction. And here is our fixed point P, and this, since F is weakly contracting, F uh, restricted to this curve is already contraction, con contraction, and uh, we we want to show that to this direction F is also contraction, but F maps this point to this point, whereas the same, whereas the other point in the same curve goes to the other point of this another curve. So to go x goes to this is same as to show that this goes to this and this and then this. And in in interior of omega f is already contraction. So to this direction f is also a contraction. So we can show that f weakly contracting F is actually a contraction, full contraction. So by Yoko's, Kang Te Kim and Yoko's result, we, we can show that this point P is of finite TN0 time. So this is it. Thank you. Thank you very much.